What is up guys, Jack here, and today for you I have my top 5 changes for the better in iOS 8. So I'm going to be comparing this between iOS 7 and iOS 8. You may be aware that I did release a video yesterday covering my top 5 features, so a lot of these are going to sort of uh, combine and sort of lap over, and it, just in case you did miss that, I'll have my full iOS 8 playlist down in the description down below, and as well as links just to those separate videos. I've also got a separate, another one on how to get features if you are jailbroken on iOS 7, but as I said, this one is going to be, fe is going to be focusing on the main changes for the better between iOS 7 and iOS 8. So that's basically going to be things that were already in iOS 7 that have been made better. Let's just head straight into it. So first up we have the camera. So you, as I said you may be aware that I did make the video yesterday saying my top five features and the camera did feature in that. But I am very happy with the new camera. Uh, as I said there is now the ability to change the exposure separately to the autofocus. So you know, I can't actually choose where you want the exposure to be. But as you can see here you just slide sort of up and down and it adjusts the exposure. So as you can see I've got a similar sort of shot going on on my iPhone 5 which is the device running iOS 7 by the way. But you can see I have, I'm fixed with the exposure that it does on the auto focus whereas on the iPad mini running iOS 8 beta 1 I can adjust the exposure to get it just perfect. You also have a new timer option and a time lapse if that's something that interests you. I really do like the time lapse feature, definitely a nice little feature added by Apple and the timer is always good if you want to take photos. Next up we have multitasking. So this hasn't received a big upgrade but it's definitely got a better use of space now. So you've got your favourites along the top there. Definitely much nicer than how iOS 7 was. iOS 7 to me just felt like it wasn't quite finished off. On the iPad especially it just felt like it had been enlarged from the iPhone uh, and it's very very nice. So next up we have Siri and Siri's received some big updates. Now you don't, if you're plugged in, as you don't have to use um, you, any touch of your device. So as you can see on iOS 7 here, I'm having to touch my device each time I want to speak and I'm playing music now and if I just ask it what it is, it knows what song is playing. But that's only due to the song is actually playing on the device. So it's just reading it from the music library. Whereas if we jump over to my iPad mini, which is running on iOS 8, and as you can see, I didn't even have to press anything. I just clicked, I just said, hey Siri. It comes up, I just asked uh, what song is playing. Nothing is playing, it's getting it, using its Shazam integration to find out what is playing from my laptop. So it picks it up like that. And I also have the option of buying the song directly from iTunes already, although I already do have it as I bought the CD. You also have many other options. As I said, you just don't have to touch Siri if you're plugged in charging. In my opinion, one of the most amazing, well, one of the most useful features, sorry, in iOS 8. So next up we have the keyboards. So this has been sort of um, spoken about a lot, but I don't think it's been explained enough by a lot of people. The fact that there's keyboards now, um, or with third party keyboards, isn't the most exciting thing. It's definitely a nice little feature. But the main thing about this is the fact that Apple are actually allowing third party people to put keyboards in. So it's sort of hinting at the fact that they may open up their operating system. That's the more exciting thing about the fact of them allowing third-party keyboards, the hint that they may allow third-party applications and things like that. Well, although they do already uh, third-party applications, but more support, if that makes sense, so you can open up YouTube links in YouTube and things like that in the future. But anyway, this has been my top five favourite changes between iOS 7 and iOS 8. If you have enjoyed this video, then definitely leave a comment down below and a like if you're feeling awesome, as well as oh, do subscribe if you are new here, as I said, I've posted a couple of iOS 8 videos in the past couple of days. I promise that the uh, constant content of iOS 8 will be stopping soon. I'll be coming back with some reviews, but I obviously will keep the iOS 8 coming, as it is the new operating system at the moment. Anyway, thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter, at Jack and I'll catch you next time.